Hi, I'm Heather from Heather Handmade and today I am going to teach you how to sew knit fabric, that's fabric that stretches with just a sewing machine. I'm going to share all the tips and tricks so that you can be successful with sewing knits and you don't need a serger. If you like sewing a lot, please follow my channel, like this video, and share it with anyone who wants to learn how to sew knit fabric. I first started sewing knits with just a sewing machine and I did that for a couple of years. Eventually I got a serger, but it wasn't a very good serger, so I would still sew my seam with a sewing machine and then finish the edge with a serger. So I was still essentially using the same method of using just a sewing machine and it wasn't until maybe a year or two ago that I actually started doing everything with a sewing machine and a cover stitch machine. So if you want to know how to sew knits with just a sewing machine, I have a lot of experience. I've been doing it for lots of years and I hope this will help you not be so afraid of sewing with knit fabric. When it comes to sewing knits, the important thing is that you know the knit fabric that you are using. So there are stable knit fabrics where on the vertical there's not a lot of stretch but on the horizontal there's a lot of stretch. So like fleece you can't stretch it that much going vertically but crosswise you can stretch it a lot. And these are the easiest to work with because <clears throat> it is stable on the grain line. So those I do recommend using with your sewing machine. These are things like polar fleece, sweatshirt fleece, some French terry, more like a heavier weight French terry. Fabrics like those are a little bit easier to use. Um, you can also do Ponte di Roma or scuba fabric. Those are easy to work with and they are stable fabrics. There are medium weight fabrics that are stretchy in both directions and these are things like cotton spandex and a heavier cotton spandex is much easier to use than a lightweight cotton spandex. This is a rib knit that is stretchy both ways but it is very stable and it returns very well to its original shape. There are sweater knits, but sweater knits really fall into their own category because there are heavy sweater knits and lightweight sweater knits and open weave and closed weave, so I'm not going to really address sweater knit fabric in this video. They are just an option. Then there are lightweight fabrics that are knits that are like um, a rayon spandex and rayon spandex have a lot of drape and movement. They are not always opaque, sometimes you can see through them, and <clears throat> they are the trickiest to sew th with, the lightweight fabrics, so all of these fabrics, there can be lightweight versions, but the rayon spandex is probably one of the hardest. There are lots of types of knit fabric that I haven't covered in this video. There are also um, a hundred percent cotton knit fabrics. So the important thing when you are sewing your knit fabric is that you know what fabric you're using so that you can um, use it the best, that will work the best for you and your sewing machine. Before you start working with your fabric, make sure to wash it the way you would treat it after it is finished so that it will sh get all the shrinkage out and your fabric will be the right size when you start working with it. When you are choosing your fabric or figuring out which pattern to use with it, you need to figure out the stretch percentage of the fabric. So what you do is you take some of your fabric and let's say I'm, this is four inches right here. So I'm going to hold the fabric at four inches and I'm holding the other side right here and you see how far it can stretch. So this is going to about six and a half which if it's four inches 
and it goes all the way to 8 inches, that means it has 100% stretch because it's going the full width. If it's going, you know, to 6 inches, then it has 50% stretch. If it's going 1 inch, it has 25% stretch. So you can use your own measurements. You don't have to use 4. I like 4 because um, 4 to 8, it's easy for me to figure out the stretch percentage. And good sewing patterns will tell you what stretch percentage you should use for your knits. So if you pay attention to that, it will help guide you to know which fabric to pick. Also, once you stretch it, so if I stretch this out to 6 inches, and then I let go, does it go back to the way it looked before? Does it have the ability to return to its natural shape? Have you ever had a pair of leggings that the knees just are always stretched out? That means it doesn't have the ability to return to what it was originally until it gets wet. So if I can show you another one. So this is a fleece fabric. It is five inches here. And you can see vertically it has like you know, 5% stretch, if that. But then when you check it horizontally, this is where the stretch is, it can go to about five and a half. So it probably has maybe 35% stretch. If you have fabric that doesn't have spandex, so this is 100% <clears throat> cotton, it has no spandex and I'm going to stretch it out to see how far it goes. So this can go to about six, so it has 50% stretch, but when I let go, it is a little bit stretched out. Since it doesn't have spandex, it can't go back to what it was originally unless it has that spandex to help it. So the needles I like to use when I'm sewing knit fabric are either a jersey needle or a stretch needle. Both of these, they're tips, which you can't see with your eye, but if you had a, ma a magnifying glass, you could see that the tips are kind of like a rounder tip. They are not so sharp. A sharp tip of a needle is meant to break the actual fibers so that the thread has a place to like sit in and stay. When, it, when you're sewing knit fabric, if you actually pierce and you know cut those fibers, then the fabric will unravel kind of like nylons. When it does a run, um, a jersey or a stretch knit needle, they have a rounder tip, so they push the fibers aside and go in between. There's a little more room in knit fabric since there's lots of loops and kind of lots of space in there for stretching. So the difference between a jersey needle and a stretch needle is the back of the needle, which, so the back of the needle has a shank and there is an indent on the back of the needle here. And on a jersey needle, it is, you know, a regular size. And then on a stretch needle, that shank is actually bigger. So a stretch needle is meant for really, really stretchy fabrics like swimsuit knits or elastic. And you need a little more room for, you need more room in the shank for those loftier knit stretchy fabrics for the thread to get caught um, in the sewing machine with you know the bobbin thread and so that is the difference between jersey needle and stretch needle I use jersey needle pretty much on all my knits and I use stretch needle when I'm sewing a swimsuit or when I'm sewing um, elastic onto something else they are pretty comparable and you can, you know, often you can exchange them. But if you are using a jersey needle and you find that your stitches are skipping a lot, then the stretch needle should fix that for you because the longer shank will help catch that fabric or that thread so that it's not skipping.
When it comes to thread, I almost always use um, an all-purpose thread when I'm sewing knit fabric. It works really well with stable knits and with knits that have a spandex content. If I'm using really, really stretchy fabric, like if I'm doing leggings or a swimsuit, then I actually like to use Eloflex thread, which is a regular thread and it's, you know, thin, just like an all-purpose thread. It's just slightly bigger, but let me unravel this. It actually has just a tiny bit of give. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there is a tiny bit of give in that Eloflex thread, which is perfect for that really stretchy fabric. I will say when I'm using Eloflex thread on when I'm doing swimsuits or leggings, I actually still do a zigzag or surging to give the, you need the stitch to have stretch and then your thread has um, stretch. I find when I'm doing a swimsuit and I use all-purpose thread that my threads are still likely to pop and so that is my solution is to use Eloflex and a stretch stitch but I have not actually tried Eloflex thread in a stray stitch on a stable knit fabric. It actually might work so maybe that's something you could try. When I am using fabric that is 100% cotton and it has no spandex um, in the fibers at all, then I have found if I use all-purpose thread, it's actually like the polyester is too strong and it will actually create holes along the seam where that thread is pulling the fabric apart. So if you are using fabric that is 100% cotton, then I would use 100% cotton thread because then it will have the same give as the fabric and it won't be too strong to pull holes into the fabric. When I am sewing knit fabric, I use both pins and clips depending on um, what I'm doing and how fast I'm going. This is more of a personal preference and you can choose the one that you like best. So I'm showing you three different kinds of stitches and your machine might not have all of these stitches. So this first one, this is a zigzag and most home sewing machines have a zigzag. It's pretty rare that they don't. A zigzag works for um, all applications. It works for all knits and you can test it out to see how it stretches. I did one on the cross grain and one on the vertical. I can tell this is the zigzag that is when I push zigzag the zigzag button this is the width and length that starts but as I pull it I can tell that that seam kind of wants to pop that the thread is holding it back. So if I were doing this fabric and a zigzag I would make it wider and shorter so that it would have more stretch. There is also a stitch, it goes stitch, 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 zigzag, you know, cross back, up one, back again. So it kind of makes um, like an hourglass shape. And then it goes stitch, 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 back. And that actually creates space for stretching. I like this one a lot because this side, it really looks like a straight stitch. And so your seam doesn't have any when you're pulling your fabrics, you can't really see the thread. But as you can see on both my vertical and my horizontal, that it really kind of, um, it makes that fabric tunnel or kind of like pucker up. You can see that here and you can see that here. And not all machines have that, but it is an option. Another option that is more common is, a, it's called a lightning stitch. And I'm not actually sure what it's doing. It's kind of going forward and back, almost like a tiny zigzag, um, like a lightning bolt, but it stretches really well. You can see that it's not holding the fabric back at all. It looks like a straight line because that zigzag is so close together and it, you know, it works also on the vertical. So those are three options that work re really well in your sewing machine. If you don't have these two 
fancier options, then a zigzag is great and it's perfect and that's what I've used for most of my sewing. I use a zigzag because it's actually faster than these two. These two are kind of a slow stitch and I like to sew fast. When you are sewing your fabric, um, I'm showing an example with a zigzag, but knit fabric doesn't fray. It can run, you know, creating kind of like a long um, hole, but it's not as common with fabrics that you sew with that you can create a run. So you technically don't need to finish the edge to, you know, keep it from unraveling. But if you want a really clean inside, since you don't have a serger, I usually sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is very common with um, patterns and knit fabric. And then I sew a zigzag stitch just right next to the edge to just kind of hold that edge together and make it nice and clean. If you don't want to do two rows of stitching, you can also just trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch so it's nice and small. If your fabric has a problem of stretching out as you are using it and working with it, I wouldn't recommend doing two rows since that is the fabric going through the machine twice, which more likely it will stretch out. This fabric has a good recovery, so I was able to put it through the machine twice and have it return. And it makes those insides nice and clean. I don't think it would work the same if you were using the other two fancier stitches. Like I said before, this works best when you're just doing a zigzag. If you're still having trouble with your fabric, I recommend using a walking foot in your sewing machine. And you can still do a zigzag stitch with your walking foot, but the, it will feed the fabric um, the same from the top and the bottom, and it really helps prevent waviness on those lightweight fabrics or those fabrics that don't have a great return. So a walking foot is a really great option. So depending on your machine, you might have this option, but this right here, this is a dial that changes the pressure of the sewing machine foot. So when I'm sewing knits, I actually put it all the way up to the least amount of pressure and this makes it so it's less likely to be stretched out and wavy. Even with lightweight knits, I still put the least amount of pressure and that's the way I've been the most successful. You might need to check your machine. You probably don't have a dial on the side. You might have something else or if you check your manual, maybe there's a way you can do it with like a screwdriver or something down here with your sewing machine foot, that is something that you can check and it might help you have more success when sewing knits. Another thing to do, which I'm gonna show you on this fabric, is you should do a sample of your fabric, try out your different stitches, try out your zigzag in different widths and different lengths, try out maybe if you have fancier um, stitches, try it out to see is my thread going to pop if I'm pulling it like this. Is it, can I feel that the thread is too tight and it won't stretch with my fabric? Does it make my fabric tunnel or pucker? Does it, do I like the way it looks in a seam? Does it work when I'm top stitching on a neckband? Does it go too slow when it annoys me? These are lots of things you can test out on a little sample like this. This is just a tiny piece of um, fabric that I cut off and I tried the stitches it's really important to figure out which works best with your fabric and your machine because honestly it will be different every single time. If you're having a lot of trouble with your knit fabric, there are two things you can do to help you. You can either use tissue paper and put it on top of, if you have your layers of fabric and then your sewing machine foot comes down on top, put the tissue paper between the foot and the knit fabric and it gives it just enough stability that it won't stretch out or make it wavy as you're sewing and then you can just rip it off later. Also I have used spray starch which I like I starch all of the edges of my knit fabric before I sew. It makes the fabric stable on the edges 
um, so that you can sew through it, but then the starch washes out and you won't have a problem with it staying in and bothering you later. So these are both options that I have seen people use and they're very successful. You can use the one that will help you the best. One complaint I often see is that when you sew knits, it can easily get sucked down, you know, down where the bobbin is. And so the best way to prevent that is don't start on the edge, start a little bit into the fabric like this, and then hold your threads as you start sewing to it will keep the threads out of the way and it will help keep that fabric from being sucked down. So if I start, and I'm not pulling the thread, I'm really just kind of holding it so it doesn't get sucked down. Then I go back towards the beginning with a back stitch. I'm still not going all the way to the edge. And then I can sew with a zigzag. Now when you are sewing um, a neckband or cuffs or even a waistband onto fabric, the band is usually 80% smaller than what you are sewing it to. And this is because when you are putting a neck band on, it needs to stretch slightly to prevent the body fabric from stretching out. And when it's pulled up on a neck line, this measurement will be shorter than this if it's, you know, going on a curve around your body. So, when you are sewing, you should never ever stretch your fabric and just let it go through the machine. But if you are doing a neck band, you should use a fabric for your band with really, really good recovery. And then I'm going to show it here instead of in the machine because I think it's easier to see. So when I'm sewing, I'm going to stretch. I have my left hand in the back and my right hand in the front. And I'm gonna stretch the top fabric to fit the bottom fabric as it's moving through the machine like this, I am not stretching this fabric at all. I'm just stretching the band. So then when it's done, you know, it's going to pull that in slightly, but there won't be any um, gathers or tucks. It will just lie smooth like that, and that's how you get a nice looking band. Now, when it comes to hemming, um, knit fabric you need that hem to stretch and usually you know the cross why the cross grain of the fabric is the most stretchy and so your hem is where you need it to stretch the most so I like to use a twin needle on my sewing machine you install it the same way um, right the top of the needle can be installed in your sewing machine the same way. I actually have a video that teaches all about using a twin needle, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail in this video, but when I'm using a twin needle on my sewing machine, I would always get tunneling, which means that um, my hem would kind of be stuck together like this, and it was kind of created a little tunnel of with the thread, and so I found I have tried lots and lots of different hem tapes to help um, prevent tunneling and the best one I found is the heat and bond soft stretch. This is the light version. So you, um, you iron it on. This is the sticky side. You iron it on to the hem of your knit fabric and then you peel off the paper backing and fold up that hem and press it again and that gives the fabric just enough stability to hold the hem in place while you are stitching without tunneling but it's not too stiff to create a really heavy or stiff looking hem that sticks out so this is the one solution I have found that I really really like and I use it over and over again I prefer using a stretch twin needle instead of a regular twin needle because I don't want to cut any holes in my the fibers of my fabric and so I need the softer edge, you know, the softer point of a stretch needle and if I use a if I have a stretch twin needle then I can use it on all of my jersey fabrics and then even swimsuits and leggings without having to use a different 
twin needle, I can use the same one for all of them. When you're all done, make sure that you give all of your seams and hems and neck bands a really good press. This will help remove any waviness if there is some. I hope you learned something from all of these tips for sewing knits without a sewing machine. If you have any more questions or you have a problem you seem to run into a lot, please leave them in the comments below so I can answer them. Maybe if I get enough, enough questions, I can do a whole video with answering all of your questions. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you have a wonderful day.